name's Jim Young. I've been a functional potter for 40 years, and this past winter I learned something, and it's the reason I like to do pottery, that I've never known anything about, and that is how to make what are called extreme forms. I went and took a workshop with Richard Ernie in, in North Carolina, and Richard is a longtime teacher and friend of mine, and he taught something which he calls throw it, stack it, and throw it. And all these forms that you see here I had to create, and what they are, is, uh, is, is, is uh, things that lock on the wheel that will let you throw a bowl within a bowl. So I created all of these when I got back and I'm going to explain the process to you. But one of the things that I like about pottery, as I started to say, is the opportunity to grow and expand as a person. As a matter of fact, my wife and I, I guess you have to say that our favorite thing is cultural exploration of art forms, whether it's in Greece or this past winter my wife was in Africa, in East Africa, studying African culture, African art forms, and then coming back and trying to translate it into something in our own studio uh, that makes sense for us as, as residents of the central part of the United States. So, I hope this all translates, uh, but we'll see. So, why don't we move over to the wheel and I'll take you through the next step. First of all, what are extreme forms? Extreme forms are, to me in this case, are the, uh, uh, the, the making of a single form, which you see here, from three other forms. It could be more than that. It could be four forms, five forms. Uh, but, but we're going to start out by taking this ball of clay and throwing it inside of this, this, this uh, spinning uh, form. Then we will create another form, which becomes the top part, which will be this. And lastly, we'll create a, uh, a little chimney to stick on top here. And this is a sort of a moderate example of an extreme form. Uh, there are bigger ones, as you'll see in the pictures, uh, of bowls and, and different forms that are 20 inches wide that are really quite a bit of fun. So, let's get going. Okay, the first step is to take this form that I've created, and I'm going to attach it to the wheel fits on rather nicely like that and as you can see it's just start the wheel up and it, it's a spinning uh, form so that's step number one step number two is to measure the foot of the piece the diameter of it and then take a measurement off of that and you'll see why we're doing this in just a moment okay this is four and a half pounds of clay and we'll start this wheel up and I'll center this four and a half pounds. And what we're making right now, we call a slug. And it's something that will fit down inside of the other pot. So now I need to shrink the bottom a little bit so it will uh, it'll, it'll, uh, be within the, the reach of these calipers. And let's see what we got. Pretty good. Okay. I'll take away this excess clay here. Now I'm going to open up this slug. have to leave a little bit of a thick bottom on this because it will go down into the form into which this is going to be placed. Okay, and I'm going to pull this up. I'm not going to throw the pot right now because we're going to do that within the form, but we're going to get ready by creating this rather thick walled slug. Okay. Clean up the outside. So we don't have too much excess moisture on the inside of the, the form. And we're ready now to remove this and, and go on to the other form. You ready? Okay. Let's remove this from the wheel here. I'll pick it up and take it over to the, 
into the form and set it into the waiting form. And we're ready for the next phase. Okay, here we go. First of all, I'm going to press the slowly revolving slug down in here to form a foot. Wet down the sides of the form and speed it up a little bit. Now, watch, I will begin to throw this against the waiting form. take out the excess moisture. And there you have it. That's the first part. So just before starting on the second piece, I'm going to rough up this edge here. Then I'm going to measure that edge with calipers so I'll know what size the next form has to be. Okay, ready to go. Okay, this is another four and a half pound ball. And all in all, this piece is going to weigh 11 pounds wet. And just as before, I'm going to start out by centering it. upside down. What I like to do is when I get to about this point, I, I have a roughly made piece. I'd say the walls are about a half an inch thick. And I'm going to take off a lot of the moisture right now and stretch this piece. It's the way I like to throw so that uh, though I start out wet and I use a lot of slip, I don't let it stay wet because it weakens the clay and, it, and weak clay will make the next process that you'll see uh, more difficult. So I take a moment and I'm going to stretch it out to, to accommodate these calipers. Once again, take away some of the moisture. 
this is maybe one of the trickier uh, parts of the process. Because like I say, it can't be too floppy. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, a little bit one more stretch ought to do it. rather creep out to that limit than have to close the piece in. It feels like it's stronger to stretch it out. And we ought to be just about there. That's still a quarter of an inch to go. Get there with a little rip this time. All right, that ought to be just about right. Perfect. Now I'm going to rough up this edge. And we're ready to remove this and go put it on top of the other one. So, you ready? Here we go. So, there's the form we've just created. We're going to walk it over here. And I've got to sit down on the wheel. And this is sort of the, uh, the part where if the gods of pottery are smiling on us, we'll get away with this thing. I'm going to turn it upside down quickly. And set it down. And check and see if it's just about right, and it is. I'm going to take the wire cut off this form like so and that's what we have at the moment as you can see it's not fitting perfectly yet but that's where we go from here all right I'm gonna get my top opened up a little bit so I can get my hand down in here to see if I can prevent this thing from collapsing. Okay, as you can see, it's floppy. object is to prevent this thing from collapsing at this extremely fragile state. We studied the, uh, the pottery of 1500 BC, the golden period in Greece, and we noticed these beautiful shoulders. The shoulder is what I'm working on right now of pottery, how, how proud and how beautiful they were. And I really feel like even though 
we're not we're many years removed from Greece. That left a, a uh, an impression on me, and I've been trying to get back and create some of that beautiful, what I call pride in the shoulders, in my pottery. And now that I'm working on these larger forms, it gives me a chance to get in underneath there and swell them out. And so one of the things that we're intentionally working to create here is beautiful shoulders to the pot. Sometimes it helps me to stand up, get my hand underneath, and just push gently out. And if all things are working correctly, we should get beautiful swelling shoulders to this pot. Okay, I'm gonna let this rest for a moment and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna work with this throat. Okay, I'm pretty sure that this is not going to collapse on us now. You see we've, we've formed a beautiful doming shoulder. So I will now put a little bit of moisture on this neck so I can work it. Speed up the wheel a little bit. And go ahead and close this shoulder in. Notice I have to support it from underneath for this to happen. But we can pick up the curve again. In a moment. And we'll be ready to trim that top and then put on our chimney. Okay, so I get my needle tool here, trim off this little bit of excess. Which will form the seat the chimney top. A little rough up the same area. So we'll get get a good uh, seat for the, the next piece. And voila, we're ready to go to the third phase. Before we go to th phase three, I'm going to measure the seat here to see where we want this to go. Do the same reverse measure on the, on the other caliper. And we're ready to, to now go to phase three. Phase three, two pounds of clay. We've already got nine pounds over here, two, and, uh, two balls of four and a half pounds of clay. And as before, we'll go ahead and center this clay here. And being mindful that we want it to come out this far, as you can see, I've got to draw it out. Now a 
flatten out our whole tire here, give ourselves a nice edge. Phase three. Okay. okay. We'll scratch it up here. stops and the next one begins. And there's the chimney. There are the three pieces. And short of some decorations, which I'll show you in a moment, that's the finished piece. I leave it in this form and let the bisque this this form, let it suck away moisture so it, 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 it sets up. Otherwise if I took it out of here it would all collapse. So that's the secret of, of the extreme forms. Uh, again, throw it, stack it, and throw it. One of the challenges uh, posed by forming these extreme forms, these beautiful, large sculptural pieces, is how do you decorate them? Uh, and right now I'll show you how I decorated this one, which is to create this, this little um, object here, as well as this um, very fast, uh, squiggle of clay and so I will do them both right now. I take this ball of clay, create a little bit of a, a sausage, make sure that they're about the same size. Now uh, I'm going to roll it slowly and cause this moving tool to make it into a bit of a cruller shape. Nice curve, like so. And then I'll, I'll take the same curve and go backwards, which causes them to overlap, like this. OK. 
Okay. I have this little flat edge tool. Okay, so now I take this little sausage that I made that pattern on, drop it over this flat object here, squish it together, squish is a technical term, and that's what you got. Remove this and remove that. I'll do it one more time. Here we go. And go backwards on this one. Okay, once again, bring the tool over here, drop it down, and switch it together. And that's what you get. One of the problems, not a problem, one of the challenges that we have is how do you take a beautiful big form like this and decorate it in a way that doesn't trivialize the form? How do you let it be powerful? Uh, and yet, what can you do to accent it? So I'm going to show you the kind of things that I like to do right now and some of the tools that I like to use uh, to do it. So first I'm going to stop the wheel and then I will show you the tools. We've now allowed this to rest a while uh, so that it's leather hard but not tacky. And I will show you uh, some of the tools that I use. This is an old saw blade with, with which I make that. I'll come to the other side to do the same thing again. And I just do it fast. Okay. That's that. Now we have these little uh, caterpillar-like uh, bugs that we made here. And I'm going to take my needle tool when I, when I find it. Here we go. And scratch up the foot, turn it 90 degrees away from that mark that I just made, outline, and place on here on the wall itself, and I'll scratch that up, and then use a little bit of slip on both at the pot and on this little device that we've created and stick it on like this. Now I've experimented with this particular thing for a while and I'll show you something we like. Sarah brought back this beautiful little seashell from Vietnam on a recent trip and I made a cast of the tip, the Nautilus tip from that. Watch what you can do. I think it's kind of hard to improve on nature, uh, so I like to, where we can, incorporate little pieces of nature. I'm going to load up that little Nautilus shell, lick it, and stick it. Load it up, lick it, and stick it. Okay, it's a different little deal now. This shell we picked up at a banquet in Hong Kong. Notice the beautiful little bumps on it. And I'll show you what that's good for. If you take the tip of it and put it right in that second little finger mark, look at the beautiful little mark it makes. Is that gorgeous? Nice. We've now got our handles on, a couple of interesting marks, uh, some, some defining small uh, details. And the last thing I'm going to do is to put a couple of marks uh, on, the, on the join where, they, where the two pieces came together. And I'm just going to let the wheel help me out here. OK. 
Okay, there's one, and there's two. So this is what we call an extreme form. This particular one was made with one, two, three pieces and a couple little uh, decorations. Uh, I find that these pieces are challenging, uh, even making the, the uh, forms within the fit on the wheel so that we can start these, these forms uh, was you know, a winter's worth of ex exploration. Uh, but now that I'm making them, what I find people like about them, in addition to the fact that they're obviously in, into the realm of sculpture now, they still are functional if you want them to be, with tall uh, reeds, pussy willows, uh, anything you want that's tall, or just left as a piece of sculpture. Homes that have clear story ceilings benefit by having a, a large piece hanging on the wall or sitting up on a mantle because small pieces are, are greatly diminished by huge rooms. So I feel like there's, for me, there's a whole um, avenue of creativity that has a market uh, and that I certainly enjoy after 40 years of doing pottery having something this much fun and this exciting. So I've enjoyed sharing it with you and enjoy looking at some of the pieces.